Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 35 of the front dash build. In this video we'll take some time to look at the completed front dash and we'll interact with a number of its panels and look at their physical use alongside and in comparison to what's happening in the simulation. We'll then finish with some reflections of the overall front dash build and the completion of this key phase within the overall SimPit project. Let's buckle up. Where the last video left off, we had the glare shield in place, but we can now see the side plate that I've made which covers all of the wiring and forms the side profile of that glare shield. With that done and now in place, let's just take a moment to look at the completed front dash. And when I say completed, I mean that in terms of at the outset of building the front dash, I set myself a brief and outlined the scope of how I was going to build it. And I'm at the point that I have fulfilled all of that now. In reality, I don't think it will ever be what I would call finished because there will always be improvements I'd want to make and small modifications to it. So when looking at the front dash from the standpoint of status in terms of intended functionality, there are 31 items that make up the front dash. 28 of those function fully or actually beyond what was originally intended for them. Three of them have part functionality, and that's where, with the part functionality, there are three deficiencies present. And they specifically are the EMI panel has just one gauge with needle slip, the airspeed indicator, the rotary dial need replacing, and the, the whole of the HSI, because that was a prototype, I would like to do a version two. Beyond this status of core functionality, you have aesthetical deficiencies. And a good example of a panel that is both fully functional and aesthetically deficient would be the digital clock. So functional intention, as I had it, it, it fulfills that and it, it has the time and it has the stopwatch function. However, aesthetically, it is not in line with the sim. So in summary, there are 31 parts to the front dash and each one of those 31 parts is made up of a whole number of parts as well. And of all of those hundreds of parts, there's just three that are deficient currently. So overall, I'm very pleased, although I would strive for it to be perfect in terms of intended functionality, it's about 99% the way there. From a maintenance point of view, I've designed the glare shield side profiles to be easily removable and also after disconnecting just a few wires at the back of the glare shield that whole bit lifts off quite easily as well. The rears of most panels are straightforward to access. It's only those panels, a few that run along the bottom of the front dash that are embedded amongst everything that we see. There'd be just a little bit more to access those. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and power up the sim pit now. I tend to power it up in a particular order that we'll see now. The actual computer is the last thing that gets powered up because I like I like all of the power to be fed to the RS485 hubs by the external 12 volt supplies before there's any chance that the USB outputs from the computer try to equally feed power to some of the Arduinos it's connected to. What we can see now is a screen capture and recording from the, within the simulation. On the left we have the main viewport of inside the cockpit itself. On the right you just have a couple of exported views of the MFCDs and the RWR because they go out to some of the other displays I've got connected. But what we're going to look at is a screen in screen so we can do a side by side look at and comparison between the software simulation and the physical sim pit. So at this point, I'll just randomly move from 
various panel to panel and activate certain toggles, switches and levers and from that we'll see the update within the sim and the communication between the two. And what I'll do is because I'm wearing a track IR unit I'll zoom in close within the simulation to certain panels and then we can then separately look physically at the close up of those. So we'll start with the upfront controller. Um, this is, as I mentioned before, all linked via keyboard encoder, so I can map it for any other simulators I might use. Uh, we'll just press the fire detect test button. I think I mentioned it previously in the last video, but I do like the master caution button I've used. A previous one I had that ran at 5 volts just wasn't bright enough. So this is a 12 volt one uh, ran with a MOSFET and it's definitely much brighter. And we'll just move over to the left side of the front dash. For the armament panel, all of these toggles we see here were from an actual tornado. So I'd got a couple of panels off eBay which I'd stripped down and these are the ones we can see now. Really, really, really great to use. The MFCDs were the first panels that I did for the front dash frame and therefore they've had some of the greatest use and they, they have worked really well. Well, we'll go ahead and do a, a stores jettison. And I've actually got a tactile transducer uh, mounted underneath the chair I'm sitting on. And I just need to have the software updated that drives that. But it'd be interesting to see if when dropping the stores, if you actually get to feel that. I have to say that the vacuum filled display that I use for the CMSC, I love that one. And it's one that originally I'd bought to test in advance of the countermeasures panel from the right dash and I liked it so much I ordered another and I put that one straight in in this panel and here's another one that I really love to use the landing gear panel and this is actually a landing gear lever from a tornado and it's absolute proper quality it's got a great great tactility and a great clunk to it as you sort of retract and extend that landing gear right, let's just level her out ADI, love that one as well. I think I could just never even look out the window and just fly this aircraft instrument flying all the way. So for the UHF repeater, we'll go ahead now and just on that that radio is alter the frequency and we can see that update in there. And I know OLED did the trick for that one. And there's quite a number of OLEDs scattered around the front dash, although the HSI I really felt I wanted a seven segment display for that one. Warning, autopilot. And something that's an important consideration, particularly when using uh, built panels and perhaps I've got rotating parts and they're recessed slightly, is line of sight. With that rotor encoder we can alter the position of the sphere so it's correct from a seating position. Right, let's engage autopilot again. Right, let's have a look at the EMI and also the right hand side of the front dash. And if you look at the fuel flow gauge for the left engine, you'll see the needle slip and that was just one of the three deficiencies I mentioned. The EMI panel we can see is version 2. I previously built the EMI panel but I built this one with the intention of it uh, be more efficient in its use of Arduinos, it uses fewer of them and it's got the colour bezels, the dimensions are slightly different but ironically one of the things about the new one is it's easier to maintain and one of the aspects of that was that the uh, pointers weren't glued to the stepper motor shafts 
but ironically that's the reason it now needs some maintenance because you've got that little bit of needle slip that you otherwise wouldn't have fuel quantity panel I would like to put a new stepper in there the one in there works fine just sounds a little bit worn close up of the altimeter now this one's to really good effect when you're in a steep dive and it's spinned round it's got a NEMA 8 drive in it and it, it works really well Let's have a close up of the ADI. I know I touched on this one briefly, but it's it is one of my favourite ones. It's so prominent in the front dash and it's to such great effect. And this one certainly took a while to build. You can see the adjustment I was referring to with the sphere. So just to, so it's alright from a, a line of sight okay. point of view. And I do think this one looks great with the backlighting which is integral within internal to the sphere itself. And we'll be looking at the backlighting shortly. Standby ADI. Fair bit of work for that one if you think it's such a small instrument in the scheme of the overall front dash. But I'm glad I didn't cut any corners on that one. And looking again at the altimeter... You can see that's one that when you're at speed, I mean it can go a lot faster than this, but it, the NEMA 8 drives it with such a solid movement, whereas some of the smaller X27 steppers can by comparison be a little bit jittery. Another key part to the aircraft is night flight. So we can see here all of the instrumentation backlit and front dash through to left console. So let's just alter the brightness on the camera. Now it might be difficult for the camera to, to really do justice to the backlighting but what we'll do, we'll pan round to get a view of the front dash and we'll fix a camera in a set position and we'll try and focus in as, as best as we can. So let's go ahead and get this kite up into the sky. From this angle actually we have a really good example of line of sight so if you look at the ADI it almost would look like what all you can really see is a fact from here it's recessed but from where I'm seated now and I'm looking at it the view of it's perfect because my view of it's dead on. So we'll do a few lighting tests and just click through a few maybe a few of the functions on the the nav panel Well, I'm pleased with the fire handles, and I think it, I think generally for the front dash brow, it was worth the time that it took to use the yellow acrylic, which is cut and engraved, just to give that the effect of the stripe yellow and black lines. So what all that brings us to is uh, some reflections on it now. In the approach I've taken to the front dash, I've physically replicated by building each and every panel and a lot of people do use glass cockpits and I would say that would actually probably be the way to go for most people because most people would be happy to spend some time building a sim pit but they're really keen to get to the point where they're spending the majority of the time actually flying it. I have used Helios and I did use it in test runs of the ADI and HSI and I was very impressed with it. It's something that I'd be perfectly happy to fly with. I think it, it really is to good effect. I think the approach I've taken to replicate all panels physically is something that someone would only really want to undertake if the building of it is very much they want to do it as a technical exercise in learning, which is what I wanted. So I certainly want to fly this and I will and I'll have a big phase to do that. But separate to that was the technical endeavour of, of everything involved with building it. The other thing that ties closely with the complexity of the build is the level of maintenance then needed beyond that point. That there would be a greater number of issues and challenges to fix as you're using it because a lot of things I've found where they do go wrong, it nine times out of ten relates to a mechanically moving part, which is what you get with the more involved panels. So 
So in summary of the back lighting, I'm really pleased with the effect I've got here. I'm very much looking uh, forward to building the right console where all of the wiring can be fed round from each of these because the, the, the way they are at the moment is there are back lighting per panels either on or it's off. Whereas once they're fed through the lighting panel, they'll be dimmable. So I'll be able to adjust them. The room that I'm building the sim pit in, I've put some multicolour LED lights in the ceiling. So it allows me to now replicate the flood lighting. So let's go ahead and switch that on now. And I can adjust the brightness of this. Let's put it up full. And yeah, that's definitely casting a really good strong light all across the room and down on the sim pit. So I'll have to look for a way to take the controller I have for those lights in the ceiling and tie them into the right console. So I think that will be a good addition to control it directly from there. So this represents the end of the front dash project. It's been a joy to build this and to share it. It's taken just shy of three years. I think that the combination of building the panels in the detail and depth I have combined with work and other commitments has meant that it had run for that amount of time. Probably a warning to anyone that might build something like this. I think the going in a room and building it, the effect of it's a bit like the film Interstellar where when you step out of the room, you think maybe a few hours have passed, but actually days or months have passed. But on a serious note, it, it has been great. The whole process of building this and all the learnings that go with that and that I can take those forward and apply them when I build the right console and other projects into the future. So very happy with the outcome I have here. It's not perfect, but it's more than adequate for my needs. So at this point, I'd like to shout out a few thank yous. First of all, I'd like to thank any viewers that have shared this journey with me. I've really appreciated the supportive comments um, that I've got from the community during that time. It, it's been great. I'd like to thank anyone that contributed code that I was able to use for this project. So two people come to mind. Uh, thank you to Middlefart that gave the code for the altimeter and to Caron from flyingwire.com within which I had a short collaboration where he helped me with the moving images on OLEDs which I use for the ADI. I'd like to say a thank you to the creator of DCS BIOS, FSFAN. I'm using version 0.7.1 which was the last one he took it to before the other version came with the hub control. But I'd like to say thank you for this amazing piece of software and also anyone else in the community that's uh, supporting its continuance as that might certainly be something I'd be looking to use in the future. Thank you to Dimebug for his A10C front dash plans. They're really great and formed the, well, the whole framework of the front dash within which everything else was built. I'd like to give a shout out to my father-in-law, Phil. Thanks for all of the support you've given throughout the build. This is right from the get-go, from the left console and beyond. And not just in terms of allowing me to come around and machine uh, the various items on your CNC, but beyond that, it, all the questions that are sort of asked to do with anything electrical-based, engineering-based, um, and your support, particularly troubleshooting certain aspects of the design. One, one that comes to mind is the ADI. I mean, that alone, the... Uh, linear movement of that one um, indicator we were chipping away at for a couple of months so that and many others thank you for your support there it's been brilliant and finally a big thank you to my wife Claire for understanding my need to build this I do plan to do one more video in the front dash series which will be a time lapse type uh, video to condense together all of the key parts of the build over those number of years and then it might be other upgrades or changes in the future uh, I might tag on to this series or just release them as their own video. Thanks for watching.